If you recall your science classes in high school, you probably learned something about the scientific method. But have you ever asked yourself the question, what's so great about it? I mean, it is easy to assume that the scientific method is great just because it is used in a ton of different areas such as physics, chemistry, and biology. To figure out whether the scientific method is great or not, let's interrogate its contents. The scientific method, in a nutshell, is composed of observation first, formulation of hypotheses, experiment, analyzing results, and reviewing or modifying the hypotheses. So where does the strength lie? Well, in basically every step. The scientific method relies heavily on empiricism, meaning it draws its conclusions from observations and experiment. While empiricism itself is crucial to science in that it provides a concrete basis upon which to evaluate a hypothesis, it is not without flaws. David Hume, a Scottish philosopher and mathematician, pointed out a problem with using observations to draw conclusions. As with empirical approaches, no number of observations can truly prove that a hypothesis is true, while it is very easy for a single exception to prove the hypothesis wrong. Let's say that Derp, a stick figure, makes a bet with his friend Herp that all swans are white for one million dollars. Derp travels across the globe and sees about a million swans that are white. Then, on one day, he spots a swan that is black. Because of one swan that is not white, his claim, despite a million positive observations, is immediately proven false. And this is the problem of induction, which threatens lots of existing scientific theories. What then is so great about the scientific method? To solve this problem of induction, Karl Popper, one of the most prominent philosophers of science, suggested that science should not focus on looking for evidence to verify hypotheses, but instead on trying to find evidence that could prove them false. This may be counterintuitive, so hang on. Let's go back to Derp and the black swan example. Derp's observation of a black swan is an evidence that disproves his original hypothesis. But in the process, Derp discovers something radically new, that not all swans are white. By realizing his original hypothesis to be false, he ends up making a modified statement about swans, which is more informed and thus closer to the truth. Finding just one piece of evidence that disproves the hypothesis is more decisive and effective because the scientist at least discovers what is not true, helping to modify the prediction. On the other hand, trying to find multiple pieces of evidence to prove the hypothesis goes nowhere. It would be impossible to prove through induction and thus fruitless at getting us closer to truth in science. Karl Popper also suggested that in order to find evidence that could prove hypotheses false, the hypotheses themselves must be designed so that they can be shown to be false through new and contrary evidence. In other words, be falsifiable. Going back to the black swan example, if Derp's hypothesis instead was all swans think of world domination, it would not be falsifiable because it would be impossible to observe a swan's thoughts to use as evidence with current technology. So falsifiability in science is equal to testability. Think of the scientific method as an evolutionary process where rigorous attempts at falsification lead us to discard hypotheses that cannot survive, thus helping us to continually refine our predictions, models, and steer ourselves in the best direction towards the truth. The problem here, though, is that we may be unsure of how much wrong hypotheses we need to shave in order to establish certainty. Regardless, as long as falsificationism is steering ourselves away from wrong directions, we could get very close to truth. In summary, the scientific method is not about trying to verify a prediction, but rather opening it up to testing so that if a new and contrary evidence suggests something else, science can quickly change direction and prevent itself from unknowingly dragging itself along with an error. The self-correcting nature is what's so great about the scientific method. And that's why Isaac Asimov said that the most exciting phrase to hear in science, the one that heralds new discoveries, is not Eureka, but that's funny. If you enjoyed this video or thought it was mind-blowing, subscribe to Click Philosophy for more awesome philosophy. 